Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. We have a sum over positive integer k of 1 over k, the number a minus summation v from 1 to k, 1 over 2v minus 1 squared. Number a is this double sum, n from 1 to infinity, m from 1 to n, the inverse tangent of 3 over m squared minus m minus 1, times the inverse tangent of 2 over 8 times n minus m squared plus 12 times n minus m plus 3. We need first to evaluate a, interchanging the order of summation. We can sum over positive integer m, n greater than or equal to m. Let's change summation index n by the new index j. j is n minus m. We get summation over non-negative integer j of the inverse tangent of 2 over aj squared plus 12j plus 3. We can now separate these two sums. Let's start with the sum over n. The argument of the inverse tangent function is 3 over m squared minus m minus 1. We write it as 3 over 1 plus m squared minus m minus 2. m squared minus m minus 2 is m plus 1 times m minus 2. The number we have in the numerator is the difference between these two brackets. Specifically, 3 is m plus 1 minus between brackets m minus 2. The sum is the inverse tangent of m plus 1 minus m minus 2 divided by 1 plus the product of these two brackets. For non-negative u and v, the inverse tangent of u minus v over 1 plus uv is the inverse tangent of u minus the inverse tangent of v. We can write down the sum here as the inverse tangent of m plus 1 minus the inverse tangent of m minus 2. We do this for m greater than or equal to 2 so that m plus 1 and m minus 2 are both non-negative. In other words, we isolate the term m equal to 1, which is the inverse tangent of minus 3. Then we have the sum m from 2 to infinity of this quantity here. Inverse tangent of minus 3 is minus the inverse tangent of 3. This summation is from 2 to big M. Then we take the limit as big M tends to infinity. This is a telescopic sum. The surviving terms are these three terms and those ones in addition to minus the inverse tangent of 3. As M tends to infinity, each of those inverse tangent functions converges to pi over 2. So we get from here 3 pi over 2. The inverse tangent of 0 is 0. The inverse tangent of 1 is pi over 4. So we have minus pi over 4. We have two more terms, minus the inverse tangent of 2, minus the inverse tangent of 3. For positive x, the inverse tangent of x plus the inverse tangent of 1 over x is pi over 2. We can write the inverse tangent of 2 as pi over 2 minus the inverse tangent of 1 half. The inverse tangent of 3 is pi over 2 minus the inverse tangent of 1 third. The value of this sum here is pi over 4 plus the inverse tangent of 1 half plus the inverse tangent of 1 third. This is equal to the inverse tangent of 1 half plus 1 third over 1 minus 1 half times 1 third. This quantity is equal to 1. This bracket is equal to pi over 4. And the sum of interest is pi over 2. We have another sum. Let's try to make it telescopic. The idea here is to define a function, h of g, equal to b, g over c, g plus d. b, c, and d are constants. We will try to write down 2 over 3 plus 12 g plus 8 g squared as h of g plus 1 minus h of g divided by 1 plus h of g plus 1 times h of g. If we succeed in doing this, we can write down the inverse tangent as the inverse tangent of h of g plus 1 minus the inverse tangent of h of g. The argument of the inverse tangent function is written as 1 over 4g squared plus 6g plus 3 over 2. We expand the right-hand side, simplify, and write it also as 1 over something times g squared plus something times g plus a constant. That should be equal to 3 over 2. Comparing this with that, c squared plus p squared over db is equal to 4. 2cb over b plus c squared plus p squared over db is 6. When we equate this part to 4, this means that this is 4. 2 times c over b is 6 minus 4. That's 2. So c over b is 1. c must be equal to b. These two constants are equal. We also have d over b plus c over b. This is 1 now. This sum is equal to 3 over 2. d over b is equal to 1 half. This is the choice I made. d equal to 1. b equal to c equal to 2. We can verify that if h of g is equal to this function, then the argument of the inverse tangent function has this form here. The sum over non-negative integer g of this inverse tangent function is summation g from 0 to big G of this difference, h of g here, h of g plus 1 there. We take the limit as big G tends to infinity. The surviving terms in this telescopic sum are minus 10 inverse of 0, which is 0. The 10 inverse of 2, big G plus 1 over 2, big G plus 1 plus 1. In the limit as big G tends to infinity, this converges to the inverse tangent of 1, which is pi over 4. 
the constant E that appears here is the product of two sums. One of them is pi over two, the other is pi over four. So E is equal to pi squared over eight. Here is A. From A, we subtract the summation V from one to K, one over two V minus one squared. The sum of the reciprocals of the squares of the positive odd integers is zeta of two minus one fourth zeta of two, which is pi squared over eight. This means that this difference here can be written as summation V from K plus one to infinity of one over two V minus one squared, because the constant E can be written as the full sum over positive integer V. We subtract the terms V from one to K. The difference is the sum with V starting from K plus one. We write this term using this integral. Recall that integral x from zero to one, x to the a log x to the b is minus one to the b, gamma of b plus one divided by a plus one to the b plus one. We can write down one over two v minus one squared as integral x from zero to one, x to the power two v minus two times log x. We also need a minus sign when the power of the logarithm is odd. Applying the sum to this term here, we have a convergent geometric series. The first term is x to the power two k plus two minus two, that's x to the 2k. The ratio of the geometric series is x squared. The sum over v is x to the 2k over 1 minus x squared. Now we apply the sum over positive integer k. We have minus summation k from 1 to infinity. x squared to the power k divided by k. This is the series for log 1 minus x squared. The sum of interest is the integral x from 0 to 1 log x times log 1 minus x squared divided by 1 minus x squared. We need to evaluate this logarithmic integral. Let's consider it multiplied by four. Do the change of variables, y equal x squared. Log x becomes one half log y. Log one minus x squared is log one minus y. One minus x squared is one minus y. dx is one half y to the minus half dy. Four times one half times one half, that's one. The integrand can be written in this way. y to the minus half, one minus y to the minus one, log y, log one minus y. The beta function beta u and v is integral y from 0 to 1, y to the minus 1 plus u times 1 minus y to the minus 1 plus v. The integral of interest can be obtained from beta u and v by partially differentiating once with respect to u to get log y and once with respect to v to get log 1 minus y. The value of this integral is obtained from the beta function after doing the partial differentiation and taking the limit as u tends to 1 half and as v tends to 0 from above to match these exponents here. The beta function itself can be written as gamma of u times gamma of v divided by gamma of u plus v. Let's differentiate first with respect to u. So gamma v is treated as a constant. We have the first derivative of gamma of u with respect to u divided by gamma of u plus v minus gamma of u. We need to differentiate one over gamma of u plus v with respect to u. That's minus the first derivative of gamma of u plus v divided by the square of gamma of u plus v. Take gamma u over gamma u plus v as a common factor. Inside the bracket, we get this ratio, which is di gamma of u, and that ratio, which is di gamma of u plus v. Di gamma of z is the logarithmic derivative of the gamma function. So it is the first derivative divided by the gamma function itself. Now we need to differentiate with respect to v. Gamma of u is treated as a constant. When we differentiate with respect to v, we keep this ratio and differentiate this part with respect to v. We get minus tri gamma of u plus v, the tri gamma function is the derivative of the di gamma function. If we fix this bracket and differentiate this ratio, we will get the ratio back times the bracket with di gamma of v minus di gamma of u plus v. I will use this property of the gamma function. Gamma of z plus one is equal to z times gamma of z. Gamma of v is equal to gamma of v plus one divided by v. We have this minus tri gamma of u plus v. We have this part times di gamma of u plus v. This part is also multiplied by di gamma of v. I write it as di gamma of v plus one minus one over v. For those terms, gamma of one half is the square root of pi. Gamma of one is one. We also get gamma of one half in the denominator. This part here is one. Let's take v inside the bracket. We have this bracket over v times di gamma of v plus one. We also have this bracket multiplied by minus one over v squared, written here by reversing these terms. So we have plus di gamma of u plus v minus di gamma of u over v squared. We have the term minus tri gamma of u plus v over v, multiply upstairs and downstairs by v. 
so that we have this term di gamma of u plus v minus di gamma of u minus v tri gamma of u plus v all divided by v squared. We also have this part divided by v written again with a plus sign after swabbing these two terms. As v tends to zero, the numerator tends to zero and the denominator tends to zero. We have a zero over zero situation. Applying Globetel's rule, the limit of this ratio is the limit as v tends to zero from above of minus tri gamma of u plus v divided by one. The limit is minus tri gamma of u. In our case here, this is minus tri gamma of one half multiplied by di gamma of one. We find ourselves in a zero over zero situation when we handle this ratio and that ratio. In both cases, we also apply L'Hopital's rule. For this part here, we get di gamma of one half, tri gamma of one half. For this ratio, when we differentiate the denominator, we get two V. Upstairs, we get tri gamma of U plus V. This is zero when partially differentiated with respect to V. Minus tri gamma of U plus V. Minus V times the second derivative. These terms go away. We end up with minus one half, the second derivative of di gamma of u plus v. When v tends to zero and u tends to one half, we get minus one half, the second derivative of di gamma of one half. The integral of interest is given by this quantity here. This is the series representation of the di gamma function. When z is equal to one, these two terms are equal. The sum is equal to zero. Di gamma of one is minus a small gamma, Euler Mascaroni constant. The tri gamma function, or the first derivative of the di gamma function, is summation over non negative integer g of 1 over g plus z squared. If this is evaluated at 1 half, we get 4 times summation g from 0 to infinity 1 over 2g plus 1 squared. This sum, as on the previous page, is pi squared over 8. Tri gamma of 1 half is 4 times pi squared over 8, that's pi squared over 2. When we differentiate the tri gamma function to get the second derivative of the di gamma function, we get minus 2 summation g from 0 to infinity, 1 over g plus z cubed. Put z equal to 1 half, multiply numerator and denominator by 8. We get the sum of the reciprocals of the cubes of the positive odd integers. That's zeta of 3 minus 1 eighth of zeta of 3. 7 over 8 times minus 16 is minus 14. This part here is minus 14 zeta of 3. For di gamma of 1 half, we write 1 over g plus 1 as integral t from 0 to 1 of t to the g. We write 1 over g plus z as integral t from 0 to 1 t to the power g plus z minus 1. When z is 1 half, the power here is g minus 1 half. Swapping the order of integration and summation. The sum applied to t to the g is 1 over 1 minus t. The sum applied to t to the g minus 1 half is t to the minus 1 half, 1 over 1 minus t. Do the change of variables, t equal to x squared dt is 2x dx. This ratio becomes 1 minus x to the minus 1 over 1 minus x squared. This integral is 2 times integral x from 0 to 1. x minus 1. Downstairs, we have 1 minus x times 1 plus x. So this is minus 2 integral x from 0 to 1 of 1 over 1 plus x. This is minus 2 log 1 plus x. When we use the limits of integration, we get minus 2 log 2. Di gamma of 1 half is minus a small gamma minus 2 log 2. Putting everything together, we get that this logarithmic integral, which is this sum of interest, is 7 over 4, zeta of 3, minus pi squared log 2 over 4.